Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're Hello. back. It's Saturday. We have to record today, so we figured we would pop up Patreon, let you guys in on the recording while we're doing it. Um, I set the time for 1045, so we have a few minutes to kill before we really like get into the conversation, so let's bullshit a little bit. Okay. Last night, we went and saw The Bike Riders. Oh, that's what the movie was called. That yeah. makes sense. With Norman Reedus and um, Tom Hardy. and the guy it, who played Daryl was in it. Yeah, Norman his, Reedus. His little baby teeth. Yeah, rotted, rotted Did baby teeth. Did not like it. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, we had date night, went to, okay. to Cinebistro, did the Cinebistro thing. Um, we had a, a really long conversation on the way up. I, I have been mentally affected by social media over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I should say mentally infected and not affected yeah, because infected. infected is probably more an accurate and apt description. Like you have fucking tapeworms or something in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, the discussion on the drive up for 45 minutes was marriage. Yeah. And we made a video on TikTok asking what it is that you bring to the table and what benefit does marriage have to you? What benefit is there in marriage? I think it's the way we worded it. Yeah. And then what do you bring to the table? What benefit do you see in getting married? And I have to be honest, out of the 20,000 views and almost 1,000 comments, uh, I think that's wrong. Those numbers okay. are way the fuck wrong. I'm going to go grab my Kindle real quick. Okay. So I can make notes. Out of the 20,000 com uh, views and 164 comments, I fully expected there to be ugliness, bitterness, there's no reason, fuck marriage, fuck women, fuck men, all of that nonsense. And I have to be honest in that our community fucking came through last night. Yeah. Because all of the comments were positive. I, I, I scroll, I didn't read every comment, mm -hmm. so that's a false statement. But I quickly scrolled this morning to see if I could find a couple that I could hone in on and pick apart and talk about and give lead into discussion for what we're going to be talking about today. I want to read you some of the comments at random. Okay. First one said, benefit. I get someone who has my back no matter what. My biggest supporter who pushes me to be the best version of myself. Right? That's so much okay. better than the shit that I was expecting. Right. Next random one. Trust. I want to know that I can trust him. I spent nine years with someone who lied to me all the time. Trust is a big one for me. Not only, not the only one, but a big one. So she didn't answer the question. Right. She just said trust. She didn't say what the benefit is in getting marriage because you can right. have trust outside of marriage. Right. And she didn't say what she brings to the table. Okay. Uh, this person said someone who chooses me no matter what the hardships we go through. You can have that without marriage. Yes. So where's the benefit in marriage? You didn't answer the question. And you also didn't say what you bring to the table. Mm. Having someone who is in my corner, who has my back, and who I can lean on through life's challenges. Facing hardships and celebrating wins is so much sweeter with somebody on your side. I agree with that one. Okay. Again, you can have it without marriage and you didn't say what you bring to the table. Um, all of these are positive, though. Yeah. I keep saying that because people don't read or watch the entire videos. They, they hear the question... Answer the question and scroll past. If they watch right. the entire video, these answers would be very different. Yeah. My husband is the one person I feel safe enough to fully be myself, and he will always love me. I am grateful to be by his side. I'm sorry. I'm grateful to be able to return that gift to him. It's hard to describe how safe it feels. Again, doesn't answer the question, but a positive answer. Mm. I wanted a teammate who would always work with me to get through life. I've always worked hard uh, for my relationship. And it was seldom reciprocated until I met my now husband. We are a true team. Beautiful. Doesn't not, answer the questions. Not pertaining to the TikTok. Yep. This person said partnership, shared respect, security of having someone who you can be yourself with and fight the world with comfort teamwork. Again, what do you bring to the table? Right. You can have all of this without a marriage. Mm -hmm. Loyalty, respect, honesty, partnership, and a friend. Can all be had without marriage? What do you bring to the table? Not answered. Still, beautiful answer. Yes. Not it. I, I, I haven't yet to see somebody who actually answered the entire thing. The benefit is finding someone who makes life easier. They are a partner that supports the life you both are building together. Someone who brings peace and joy to your lives together. That's close. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I would think that's fairly cl close. You still didn't answer the what you bring to the table. 
Uh, follow-up comment was finding someone who knows there will be storms in life and is prepared to go through those storms with you, all caps. Someone who supports you on the low days, finding that person, again, caps and that, makes marriage worth everything. Doesn't answer the question. I'm not going to keep reading these. Nobody actually answered the question. Everybody answered with, with positivity. Okay. But nobody actually answered. Okay. We talked about this at length. What The benefit that you get out of marriage, unless it's a spiritual situation where you are going in from a religious or spiritual standpoint, there is no benefit. You get tax breaks. You, insurance, right. Yeah. Um, end of life things. Right. There's legalities that can come from it. The benefit comes from knowing that you have somebody who is committing themselves to you forever. Yeah. But you have to trust that they are actually going to commit yourself and, you know, each other, mm -hmm. commit to each other indefinitely. The what you bring to the table is your willingness to serve. If you get married and you're not willing to serve your marriage, serve your spouse, serve your marriage, your marriage is doomed to fail because the marriage has to take priority. <clears throat> and if you're not willing to put the marriage as a priority and you're not religious or spiritual, what is the benefit that you get from being married that you don't get from just living together in a monogamous, dedicated relationship? I have been dwelling on this for two weeks now. Yeah. And it went from me just trying to understand what we get out of marriage to what's the fucking point in being married for most couples because marriage is in a really high divorce rate. And like I'm having all of these fucking... Um, infective, infectious thoughts from the internet because of the ugliness that I'm seeing. And on top of that, we now have a couple people that we know in our personal lives who are getting divorced. Yeah. And um. we are watching the ugliness play out in real time because there was no prenuptial agreements and um, what... There were no conversations of what the future looked like or expectations. Right. But their marriage failed because they weren't willing to serve each other, both yeah. in both scenarios. Like, so... Because of the internet and because of where we're at in terms of society and having these marriage thoughts, I realized first and foremost how fucking lucky I am to have a woman who has the values that I have. Because you do bring something to the table which makes marriage worthwhile. There is a dedication there and we're willing to serve each other. I know that in the event that I get hit by a car and I'm paralyzed for the rest of my life, you're not going anywhere. And I believe that with everything in my being. And in the event that that happens and you do go somewhere, I currently have that trust that you're not and that this is it forever. Some of that speaks to faith. Some of that speaks to the loyalty, loyalty of each other. Mm -hmm. But that is not a emotional-based thought process for me. That is a logic-based thought process because of the way that we serve each other. I can right. see that. So I don't view this as, a, oh, she's the one. I'm in love that Soul booty's mates. amazing. Like, this is just the greatest thing ever, right? Like, there is a logic brain thought process behind that. Our astrological signs and um, birth charts line up. Yeah. He's perfect. Yep. I hope some of you feel personally attacked by that. What's that? I said, I hope some of you feel personally attacked by that. Because that is their thought process. Before getting to know anything, I need to know if our birth charts align. I've never checked our birth charts. That's good. Never looked at our birth charts. And we have an absolutely nurturing, fulfilling, reciprocating union. And I have no idea about our astrological signs. That's good. I'm That's glad. Just, I am the living <coughs> proof, guys. You don't have to look at that guy. It's okay. Um, I want to have discussions about marriage. Now that we're, okay. we're actually to the point where we're supposed to be going live, okay. we've made it to the, the 1045 a.m., um, from a Peach's standpoint, what's the point of marriage? From my standpoint, it is like me now. Are we talking me now or when we got married? Like me now? Now. Okay. Because the, the big changing factor in what I'm going to say is my religion. Okay. So what I get out of being married is like on God, <laughs> you're going to do this with me. I have a lot of faith in my God and you having that same faith to the extent that you do, it's a reassuring thing for me. It is a soothing thing for me. Um, the long-term guarantee that this is it, that no matter what, you're going to work through things with me instead of 
throwing your hands up and being like, fuck this, my happiness comes first and I'm leaving. Um, I, I would say it's just like, uh, with my religion being involved in it, it's a, it's just the solidified of I got you. And it's going to go <clears throat> in my belief into the afterlife. <clears throat> So for people who don't have any type of faith, okay, spiritual, religion, whatever you want to call it, they don't have faith. Yeah. Where would that tie in at? Because so, at that point, you're just telling each other that this is going to be the way that you want to live your life for the rest of your life, but there's nothing really right. backing it other than your word. And most people's words now are not... It means nothing. Honorable. Yeah. And if that's the case, does that take away the sanctity of what marriage is supposed to be um, because people lie to each other all the time. They do. So where my mind was when we got married, I want to renew our vows and involve the religion aspect. So do I. But when we got married, I didn't have the religion. So I was in the headspace of this is my action to back my words. Like, this is my physical, I mean, all of my actions show that I got you, but this is the ceremony of That's a good, good solidifying word. our love. So it's ceremonial. Yeah. Okay. I, I viewed it as a ceremony, okay. yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this then. What okay. do you get out of marriage? Um, what are you getting out of all of this? I'm getting a protector. So with us being married... I view marriage as a big thing. I should probably take the Yeah, I was going to say I can't take you seriously with the nose ghost. Okay. <laughs> um, so I take marriage as a level up in life. This is, we're going from courting and dating to this is it. No matter what, we have each other in a world that's on fire. No matter how mad you are at me, no matter how disappointed you are in me, Unless it's an extreme level of betrayal, right? Sorry, I fucked up dinner. You can be mad about that. Sorry that I forgot to get you your candy bar when I went grocery shopping. Here's a forehead kiss. Like, you're going to be mad, but we're going to be in the same room. I don't remember where I was going with all of that. Okay, well then let's talk about that because there's a level of trust and belief in the words of the person that you were with. And it has to be from a logical standpoint right. to honestly believe that they're going to be there. Yeah. So that could talk about the, this is all hypothetical conversation, guys. Yeah. This is a discussion that we had in the car that we were both like, this would make a really great episode. Let's record it. So we stopped talking about it and, and we're recording it. Yeah. So knowing that that speaks on trust and having to believe that your person's word is honorable mm -hmm. and that they're going to follow through do you think that you need to have some sort of hardships before you get married to, married to see the way that they're going to, to, to overcome that? Because people are real quick to walk away from somebody. I'm mad. They fuck are. you. Yeah. Now, to be better said, to protect my peace, you farted. It stunk. I don't like it. I'm leaving. Yeah. Right? Like, right. There, if we lost all of this and we're living in a cardboard box and we were struggling financially, struggling to eat, like we were not okay you being the beautiful, young, bubbly, happy peaches would be real easy to find another man that would step in and support right. you like that. I have to trust that you're willing to live in a cardboard box with me and we're going to suffer until the end of our lives together right. and you want to be here, right? Like there's yeah. a lot that's, that speaks to that. So you, you said that cardboard box scenario and my brain immediately went into like, I'm going to make jokes about, okay, babe, I'm going to go to the other room and make us our ramen and like pretend to close a door inside of our cardboard box just to make you laugh. <laughs> it, it didn't even cross my mind that I would 100% be able to just be able to do that. Why do you think that is? Like because what you're makes you, it for me. Right, but why? What makes you that dedicated to me that you are willing to give up any semblance of a happiness in life to suffer because living like that is hell. Yeah. I have lived it. But you would be willing to live that way with me. Like yeah. there, that speaks. I had somebody when I was homeless that was homeless with me by choice. Mm -hmm. He's dead now. But he was the closest thing to a blood brother I have ever had in my life because of the way that he chose to, to ride or die with me. Yeah. 
you are willing to do that. You're, you're saying that you're willing to do that. So what makes me that person for you that would make you suffer like that? Because through your actions, you have shown me that that's not going to be a forever thing. You've also shown me that I'm, I am not a strong woman. And last night in the movie, kind of a spoiler, guys. <laughs> Movie was mediocre at yeah. best, so we're not really ruining anything. Aloha, don't let your husband watch this until after he sees the movie. Okay. Or, spoiler alert, bro, no, it's coming. Yeah. Andrew, you've been warned. Okay. So, there's a point in the movie where she, there's the girl, the head biker dude who created the club. She is with the man who the head biker views as a son. Right. So, he's like in thick with the captain. I know that's not the terms in the biker club, but right. that's the only thing that I can like bring into my world. <laughs> and something happens outside. The two of them leave. And now she is by herself. She is his old lady known to be that. And then three men come and just grab her. And she is fighting for her fucking life to not get taken upstairs. And they're like, oh, we're going to have a good time. Loosen up. Just come up with us. Let, let us take care of you. And the panic I felt in that moment, I was like, I was like, all right, it's taking too long. I'm like, where's the guy? Like, where, where's the dude that's going to step in? I really thought that they were going to show him just fucking. I would not be able to stop three men. Right. And yes, we are living in a, a nicer society here in America. Being by myself in an apartment is terrifying. I, I, am, I, am, I am not above that won't happen to me. Shit's happened to me already. And you have proven to be that protector to me. I'm not going to fucking let that go because you make me mad sometimes. Are you kidding me? Well, living, living on the streets and, and going through that hardships, not having money and the stress that comes with being broke and yeah. losing everything and destroying credit and, and having to go from a right. really big house to an apartment or right. a duplex. Like there are people out there who will go, this isn't what I signed up for. I'm out. Right. But I, I signed up for you. Okay. Okay, well, see, so that that speaks differently to the marriage because there are people who are like, uh, they're sick now. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign up to be a caretaker. I'm out, right? right? Or we were in a really good place. We lost our business. We lost our house. Yeah. This isn't the life I want. I deserve better than this. I'm fucking out. And they're going to leave while the man is down and out or the other way around because that happens. Right. So you saying that you're signing up for me. Yeah. Me comes with all of that because right. I am a hard worker and I have those things. But what happens in the event that I can't? What makes you choose to stay in all of that? So you. I need it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to elaborate, but the, the <clears throat> answer is you. I, I didn't sign up for the big house or the big yard and the lavish lifestyle and the money and motorcycle rides. That's a really dope bonus. And I love that in human form, I get to experience this versus poverty. I've experienced the poverty. Being able to go from that to this, it's like a whirlwind. But logically, I came in with nothing. I'm leaving with nothing. That has been my motto my entire life. Except for my soul. And my soul being melded to yours is far more valuable to me than any material item in this blip of a lifetime. If you were to lose yourself when we lose everything, that might be a problem for me. And if you were not willing to work on your mindset and get back to the person that I love, that would be hard. But. Well, that speaks for better or worse, right? right. If my mental health goes and you abandon me in my mental health because I'm not willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that speaks on a lot of things, but. I didn't say I would leave, but it would be hard. Right. Well, okay. Well, I, I mean, that's, that's a discussion that needs yeah. to be had because. We, that would be far harder for me than losing everything. Yeah. We both battle depression, so that's that's also a very real conversation. Like, <clears throat> granted, it's not like it was. Um, I think that a lot of people wallow in their own self pity because it's easier to be depressed and silent than it is to have the hard conversations sometimes. Right. And people will just be like, "I'm just not happy." Well, what do you need to be happy? I don't know. When they really fucking know, they just don't want to say it because they don't want to hurt other people. Right? They don't have a spine, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Like that just adds. Selfish. It adds to it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so then let's move on to the next question because okay. I have a whole list of shit over here I want to run through. Okay. 
How many people do you think get married simply so that they can overcome the fear of living life alone? Because it's easier to do it with somebody than to do it by yourself. Um, <clears throat> what happens when I'm I'm old? What happens when I'm the crazy cat lady? What happens if I'm a lonely old man that only has my church group to talk to? Like, I think a lot more than are willing to admit. Okay, why do you think that? Because why don't I think they won't admit it? Or why do I think that that's a thing? Both. I think that they are not willing to admit that because that's going to hurt feelings. It is, absolutely. I'm not really in love with you. I just love you enough to tolerate you for the rest of my life. Right. I, I love not being alone. I, I saw a TikTok the other day of a woman who was like in her 70s or 80s and her husband passed away. She said, I was married to this man for 40 years. And she was like, now that he's gone, I really want to experience what it's like to be in love with somebody. Damn. And I was like, holy fuck. And on the flip side of that, you have people like Steve Irwin's wife who is like, I will never marry another man yep. because I had Steve. Yep. Like I had my one. She, was, am, am she I said, lonely? I'm not lonely, yeah. but I'm lonely for Steve. Yes. Yes. That's exactly the fucking quote. I'm not lonely, but I'm lonely for him. And she will live the rest of her life alone because her one died. Yeah. Like those are the marriages that like actually have weight to them. They're not superficial. They, they were what I believe people are supposed to have when they get married. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Oh, fuck. I'm already crying again. I really look up to that woman. Yeah. Because she gives me hope that if or when it happens and you do pass before me, or if you do pass before me, that I will be able to be okay. I think you will. I think it'll suck. Yeah. I'm sure it was, she went through hell. But you got to think like oh, that God, family I'm gonna fall apart. That family did everything right. Like their kids are very intelligent. They're very good. They're, they've become productive people. Her, her son yeah. has been a photographer since he was a photographer since he's been in single digits. He's right. following in the footsteps of his dad. Like they I are, know. you know, <clears throat> it's just it's a lot. I was crawling into bed last night. And I was like, oh, I love my life. I love my husband. We have so much fun. And I was like, I really need to remember these times because one day I'm going to be 80 and I'm not going to be living this life anymore. Yeah. That falls into the love quiz that we were having the other day. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <clears throat> so I wrote down, is love enough slash emotional brain thinking? This no. speaks to the people who are getting married because they've been together for five months and are madly infatuated with each other because right. they've not had any real fights. This is the illogical brain saying that everything is puppies and rainbows. It's going to be cotton candy clouds for the rest of our lives. Right. And they have not looked at their relationship from a, an objective standpoint. Yeah. Then they're three years into a marriage and they send an email to us and they don't get along. They've, they've not been happy for a very long time, whatever their reasons are. So do you think that people who do not have <laughs> a mental illness and has not had to, to learn to switch from emotional to logic brain thinking are at a disadvantage in this? Because we can't emotional brain think about things. We can't make decisions on emotional no. brain. Like we have had to really work on... I'm emotional right now. I need a minute. I have to logic brain think this through and then we can have a discussion. Like a lot of people don't do that. Our kids are even doing it now. Right. I'm angry. Give me a minute. I'll be like, okay. Come back to me when you've calmed down and we can have a conversation. <clears throat> yeah. I think that they are at a disadvantage. The amount of non neurodivergent people I've seen throw adult temper tantrums. Now, do you think that that speaks to the divorce rate? In what regard? Um, okay, so first I'm going to say I do. Okay. Because if you make <clears throat> illogical decisions with an emotional brain, such as getting married while you have pea brain, um, for those of you who don't know what that is, you can Google or you can YouTube our channel, pea brain, P-E-A brain, mm -hmm. so that you can see it. Um, for people who have that and are making illogical decisions, when things get rough, they are going to make a divorce decision from an emotional brain standpoint. 
they're going to see a TikTok of a woman who's like, I'm 45 years old and I just ended my 20 year marriage and I'm in the fucking dating game now and it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. But what they don't see is two years later, she's fucking miserable saying she can't believe she blew up her marriage and she misses her husband. Working is so hard. I can't believe I chose this. Right. Because that's so stressed all the time. That's actually a thing. And you can see the, the transition from her when she was married are you talking about the blonde woman? Yes. That's who I'm imagining. To yeah. when she got divorced and how she was trying to live it up on social media. And then six months later to a year, she was a fucking disaster. My God. I The one that I saw specifically where I was like, yeah, I, the consequences of my actions yeah. was her crying in her car going, I have been faking being happy this whole time. I, I ruined my life. Yeah. She actually admitted it. Don't yeah. listen to people on social media. Don't blow up your marriage. If you have it good, keep it. Yeah. I was going to have a much longer discussion about that, but I think that just mentioning that you need to make a logic brain decision Mm. for the rest of your life and not an emotional brain decision is enough of a statement that we can just move past that. Okay. Because you making a logic brain decision is the difference between you pressing the self-destruct button in a moment of my pizza's burnt. Right. Or they fucked my mortar. They fucked my order up on DoorDash. And then you're sitting there for 15 minutes, not eating peaches mm, because yeah, you need I really a need to calm down. Right. Because if, I want to set the house on fire. Do you really want to know, like, what my brain is going through in that moment? Sure. So perfect example. The only reason that we ordered checkers the other night is because I wanted the caramel cheesecake sundae and they brought me fucking strawberry. That was the only thing I ordered. And it was wrong. And immediately my mentally ill brain went to set the house on fire, slit your wrist, fuck all of this. Right. Totally illogical. So that 15 minutes is me going like back, back bitch with a whip, like yeah. get back in your cage. Yeah. <laughs> Not doing this right now. <laughs> Whoa, horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm actually kind of proud that it only takes 15 minutes now. Right. And I ate the strawberry sundae. It wasn't that bad. Old me would have tossed it. Oh, it tasted awful. Was it really? It, the the strawberries tasted old. Yeah, but we <coughs> paid for it. I'm like, my husband would eat it anyway. So I ate it. I put on my big girl pants. That was one of those moments where I was like, you're kind of acting like a six-year-old right now. Right. Um, an adult-sized temper tantrum. Yeah. I was like, fucking eat the ice cream. It's strawberries. You like strawberries. You just weren't expecting it in this capacity. Yeah. Making emotional brain decisions is, is a, a very dangerous thing and it can be a detriment to your life. So slow the fuck down, take a breather, make logic brain decisions, have conversations because that can eliminate yeah. a lot of this. We're going to get into some stats and some shit too. I, I have a whole list of stuff I want to get into over all of this. Okay. I, and I, I would like to preface all of this by saying that I do believe in marriage and I believe right. that the sanctity of marriage is a beautiful fucking thing oh, if you God. have the right person. But I also think that there's a whole lot of people who get married for the wrong fucking reason and then hate their person and hate their life and then wonder why. They didn't do the work in the beginning. They didn't fucking build a proper foundation. They didn't have the hard discussions. There's a whole lot of things that go into that. People marry the wrong person for the wrong fucking reasons. Right. Um, Okay, so the next one I wrote down is people who cite the reason for marriage because they have never been this in love or felt this way. This one, this is the one, is based off of an emotion brain thinking. It is, because why is this the one? My response is because he's worth fighting past all of the bullshit that comes with the baggage or the mental illness or whatever, whatever, whatever. But you have to ask yourself why. Right. What, you, you want me to answer No, why? no, no okay. I was waiting. I didn't want to interrupt because I could tell that you were holding on to your train of thought and I feel like I already derailed you, but yeah. <clears throat> this falls into the love, is love enough? Yeah. This is the one I've never felt this way before. Well, what do you mean by you've never felt this way before? What are you feeling? Have you never felt this safe? Have you never felt this complete? Have you never felt like the person that you are, are going to marry is the one who completes everything and is willing to put the relationship first and is actually going to serve you. And then what does that service look like? Are you looking for a doormat or somebody that you can take advantage of that's just going to provide forever? Or are you willing to serve as well? Like he's a grown ass man. I'm not doing that. If that's your answer, that's not your marriage. Like you don't need to, if that, if you ever feel that way, he should just know 
He's a grown ass man. I'm not serving him his plate. She's a grown ass woman. She can fucking buy her own damn flowers. Like <clears throat> if that is your thought process, you shouldn't be marrying the person that you're dating. Correct. The person that you're willing to do those things for, even though that's always been your viewpoint, is the one that you need to be having those conversations about marriage with. Yeah. And what does it look like? <clears throat> do you have anything you would like to add to that? I apologize about my coughing, guys. No. All right. <clears throat> so I pulled up Forbes, did a key divorce st statistics. I have a it's hard time Forbes? with that. Forbes. It's not Forbes? No, Forbes. Forbes. Oh, wow. In 2022, a total of 673,989. I'm not going to remember this number. I'm already it forgetting it as you're saying it. Okay. Divorces and annulments occurred in, in 45 U.S. states in one year. Okay. What was, <clears throat> is it thousands, millions? 673,989. So almost 700,000. Okay. That's what I needed. Thank you. Um. During that same year, 2,065,905 marriages occurred, making the U.S. marriage rate 6.2% per 1,000 people. 6.2% per, per 1,000 1, people? Yep. Not couples? It says people. Holy so shit. <clears throat> well, that's even... It's even worse. Okay. It then says, how many marriages end in divorce? Again, this is from Forbes. Okay. Um, you guys can Google this if you want, or I can post it. I'll, I'll post it in the chat so you guys can who are watching can skip ahead if you get bored with what we're doing. Some of you may need to read like peaches. Um, how many marriages end in divorce? So what about the famous statistic of all half of all marriages end in divorce? All marriages end. Right. Death or divorce. So they do all end, Right. It's going to come into yeah, a conversation that, later. that would be the two. There's really not another option. Yep. It then goes on to say, um, that's a bit of an exaggeration. When it comes to first marriages, only 43% are dissolved. Okay. So first marriages is less than half and in divorce. Um, second and third marriages actually fail at a far higher rate with 60% of second marriages and 73% of third marriages ending in divorce. So the more you get married, the more likely you are to get divorced. Okay. <clears throat> right. Well, because the divorce happened for a reason the first time. Right. And if you're the one who left, that would make sense why it goes up. I'm going to challenge this thought process. Okay. Do you think that a lot of people stay together because it's cheaper to keep her? It's easier to... Just be miserable and live alone because we made our vows. We're just going to suffer together. We're going to be true to our word versus, well, I got divorced once already. It wasn't that bad. I survived it. I could survive another one. Fuck it. I need to be happy. It's me that matters. I only get to live one life. I should, that selfish ass mindset. Mm. I'm going to go do my thing. Third marriage, fourth marriage, fifth marriage, because I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. It or, sounds like a serial dater using marriage as a level up. Well, in, in some cases, it absolutely could be. We had that conversation about alimony yesterday. Yeah. In the state of California, if you are married for 10 years, you owe alimony for the rest of your life or their life, unless they get married again. If it's under 10 years, um, it's a four-year alimony or until they get married again. Now, judges can change that, but that's a, that's a hell of a fucking thing to be married for somebody for a decade from 20 to 30 and have to pay them alimony for the rest of your life. Right. That's an additional, what, 50 years? Could be. Oh, man, would that come out of your retirement funds? It, it would. It would because Holy you owe that shit. money. Fuck that. <clears throat> Fuck that. Okay. Next stat is when do couples get divorced? When marriages end, usually some ha time has passed since the wedding. The average length of marriage prior to divorce is eight years. So the average marriage is an eight-year marriage. Okay. If, you, if you've made it past the eight years, you're already beating the average. Yeah. That's marriage, not not the relationship, right. but marriage. So there are people who have been together for 20 years, get married and divorced in two. Right. So that doesn't work that way. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, how long does divorce take and how much does it cost? Divorces take time. Contested divorces usually take over a year to finalize, although some divorces can be completed in as little as three months. Divorce comes at a big cost with couples spending an average of $7,000 to dissolve their union. 
that $7,000 price range is for people who are on a basic socioeconomic level. If you are making probably less- no children involved. Right, making less than 40,000 a year, probably don't have children involved, or you get a lawyer that is willing to flat rate the cost of your divorce. Lawyer rates average 150 to $300 an hour, and if you have money and there's no prenuptial agreement, the divorces can take a lot longer, and I know personally somebody who has spent more than six figures on a divorce. That's just legal proceedings, okay? <clears throat> so it can cost a lot for that. What happens after divorce? Fewer people are remarrying after divorce than did in, in the past. In 2008, there were 48.9% remarriages per 1,000 previously married males and 25.2 remarriages per 1,000 of previously married females. That 20% difference is likely due to alimony. I believe that. Because, or child support. Well, child support would be had either way. Right. If they remarry, that child support is still owed by the father. It might change the way the child support is oh, paid. Oh, you mean the difference in women <clears throat> doing it 20% less. Right. I thought you meant more. No, it would okay. yeah, it would be it would be due to alimony. Yeah. If I get married to this man and I'm getting twenty five hundred dollars a month or five grand a month from my ex husband, I lose that money. That now benefits my lifestyle, it enhances my quality of life. Therefore, I'm not going to marry you. We can do a ceremony with no legal repercussions so that I don't lose that income. There should be a common law thing with that. Like uh, in some states, clause. there are. But I don't know how that would affect alimony. I didn't research that, so I'm ignorant to that fact. But I do know that the, some states have common law marriage. I would yeah. think that that would be a thing. Right, like if you have a man living with you for more than two years, the alimony stops. You would think that. Right. You would think that. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> um it then goes on to say that those numbers fell to 32% remarriages per 1,000 males and 17.2% remarriages females. It fell from? It fell from 48.9 to 32 in men and from 25.2 to 17.2 in women. From, <coughs> from 40 to 30 for men? Yeah, 48 to 30. 48 to 30. So that's an 18% drop. Mm -hmm. While women only dropped, what, 3%? 4%? 4, yeah. Uh, seven, seven. So let me ask you this then, because I, I, I believe that the internet is, an, is infecting our brain and making us jaded towards marriage. I believe because it started happening to me. I started because of the amount of content and the amount of mail that we do. I started looking at this, like I am one of the luckiest fucking people on the planet because of my marriage. If in the, the current state of affairs, if I was a single man, there's no way that I would ever do this again. Right. There's no reason for young men or women to get married anymore. And and it's because of the amount of bullshit that we see. TikTok fucking came through last night with all of those beautiful comments and it got me working through level headed. A little right. Bit. And then we started talking and, and like it really that it was a benefit to me. Um so I do believe that the internet is is infecting people's brains. And as people spend eight hours a day on their phone scrolling TikTok and social media and seeing all the ugliness, like I believe that we are losing hope. Mm-hmm. And I believe that there's a goal. Like, I, I truly believe that there's an intent behind that and that it's planned. Totally different discussion. I don't want to get into that. Moving back to this, crude divorce rate versus refined divorce rate. When considering divorce rates, it is helpful to understand that there are two different measures used. The crude divorce rate refers to how many divorces occur 1,000 people. The refined divorce rate refers to divorces that occur per 1,000 married women. So crude is per 1,000 people. Refined is just women. Okay. The refined divorce rate is often believed to be more accurate when measuring on a per population basis. Changes in marriage trends could affect the data rates on divorce. However, as a growing number of same-sex couples marries, divorce statistics basic, basic, um, based solely on divorces per married women have become less relevant. So now <clears throat> this is going to skew studies moving forward and it's something that just needs to be discussed. Wait, I'm confused. So we're not counting lesbian divorces? We are. They're saying that as this is becoming a thing, it's skewing the results because of the way marriages have always been done on a traditional basis. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Trends in divorce have changed over time with the number of people dissolving their unions um, decreasing. The divorce rate has decreased from a 4.0 to a 2.4 since 2000. So the divorce rates are actually in decline right now, regardless of all of the, the hijacked red pill feminist movements. These stats are saying that it's declined. In 2000, a total of 944,000 divorces and annulments occurred. 
Um, by 2022, it had fallen to 673,000. So it, it fell t- from 4% to 2.4%. Okay. The marriage rate, however, is also declining. Um, from 8.2% per population in 2000 to 6.2% in 2021. Third marriages have the highest divorce rates. We touched on that. 40% of new marriages include a partner who is remarrying, which says a lot mm-hmm. because we know that the more you marry, the more likely your marriage is to fail. Most marriages, 60%, are first marriages for both partners, but as many as 20% of unions involve one person who has been married before while another 20% are repeat marriages for both parties. Only 6% of divorced couples remarry each other. Um, Divorcees are more likely to die earlier than married people. I believe that. Because you're alone. Right. You can die of a broken heart, dude. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Die of a broken heart. If you fall and get injured and you don't have someone to help you at home. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these because they're not really relevant to the conversation. Having friends who are divorced increases your risk of divorce. I'm sorry, repeat that. Having friends who are divorced increases, increases your risk of divorce. I believe You that. are the company you keep. Right. If you have that toxic dude who's like, ah, I'm getting my fourth divorce, fuck these, fuck these hoes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Women ain't shit. They just want your money and you're in a happy marriage and you're hearing that all the fucking time. <coughs> you are going to get hmm. a negativity bias towards your marriage from your social circle and it's going to fucking destroy your relationship. Be wary of the people in your circle. If you have that negativity, you've got that bullshit, you need to cut them out. It is fucking cancerous. Right. Okay. On the flip coin, my mind went to the women version of them all sitting outside for brunch and two of them have recently left their marriages and they're like, oh, I'm so free. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to worry about him getting upset about how I'm decorating the house and go out late on Friday nights now when he has the kids. Yeah. This... This is such common information that you see it parody. You remember in Orange and News, Orange is the New Black? Yeah. Those three women, oh, I'm going to leave my husband, and all three of them got divorced? Yeah. <clears throat> it, it is a social thing. Mm-hmm. I do want to tack on there that this excludes abusive relationships. Obviously. I, I know, obviously, but the scenario that I just laid out, a lot of women would be like, oh, that sounds like a dream. I mean, I'd rather do that than be with him. Right. Excluding abusive relationships. Um, All right. Most common reasons for divorce. Lack of commitment is the most common. Okay. It says marriage is not always easy, so success requires both spouses to be dedicated to their union and serious about making it last. That's why it's not surprising that a lack of commitment could spell disaster for a couple. In fact, 75% of individuals and couples cited lack of commitment as a reason for their divorce. This was the most common cause of marriage ending, exceeding even infidelity. So what I... Really? Yeah. Okay, so say that last part one more time. This is... um, This was the most common cause of marriage ending, exceeding even infidelity. Commitment issues. Not being committed to the marriage. Not being committed to the marriage. Joking about divorce. Okay, because I'm like, cheating is not... If you ever leave me, I know I'm going to be all right. I was good before you, I'll be good after you. All of that type of mentality is going to lead to that divorce because you're planting those seeds. Yeah. If you take divorce off the table as a joke, we have a bad argument. Well, I'm sorry that you don't like me right now, but you're my husband. You just need to fucking get over that. Or Mm -hmm. you can be fucking mad at me that I didn't like your, your cooking. We're going to fucking laugh about it in a month, but right now we're getting steak and shake, right? Like, right. you can get over that shit. I, I don't care that you don't like me right now. You'll get over that. We're married. Mm-hmm. You cannot like me today. You'll love me in the morning when we wake up and I make right. you a coffee. Like, I'm good with that. I, I'm okay with you not liking me for a couple hours. I can be an asshole sometimes. I, I'm, I fucking know me. I've lived with me for my entire life. Right. I'm hard to fucking be around. You're hard to be around in your own head sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that, that checker star, strawberry Sunday fuck up as you're like, Psh, back, bitch, back, bitch. Why mm-hmm. am I like this? Yeah. Right? Like, so we know that. Yeah, we no, know I'm who we are. <laughs> but we have to be real. So what I yeah. said earlier about putting the marriage first and what do you bring to the marriage? You have to bring your ability to serve the marriage. Mm-hmm. Serve each other. If you can't bring that, there's no commitment there. What I said earlier, if you're, if that man should know better, he should fucking know what I'm thinking. Right. I'm not willing to make him his plate. He's a grown ass man. You're not fucking committed to your marriage. 75% right. 
of marriages fail due to commitment issues. So if you make those statements, know that you're not committed. You are setting yourself up for failure. And when it happens, remember to be better fucking told you so. Full chest. 60% of divorce. <laughs> I'm fucking heated now. <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> I was trying to just keep going so that I could calm down. <clears throat> Go ahead, babe. I, I want to add on to that. That another way to question the commitment of the relationship, the union, the marriage is to go, you would be better off without me. From a them saying that to you statement? Right. That or, is planting a seed. Or um, you're just going to leave me anyway. Right. So questioning their commitment would also be, in my mind, leading into, you know what, they're right. I don't want to be here anymore. You said I would be better off without you. Now I believe it. Here's a divorce. You can be miserable by yourself. That is absolutely a double-edged sword when it comes to manipulation and self-destruction. Yeah, it is. Because it's going to go one of two ways. They're mm -hmm. either going to stay in a toxic mindset or you're going to plant that seed and they're going to leave you. Right. And if they're staying from a toxic mindset of you trying to manipulate them to make them stay out of guilt, Mm -hmm. that's that's really toxic behavior you're gonna live a really shitty life and you fucking did that to yourself too right <clears throat> 60 percent of divorced couples cited infidelity as the reason for their divorce so yeah. it's 15 percent higher leading uh leaving or ending a marriage due to commitment um domestic abuse prompts divorce at 24 percent basic incompatibility and money issues are among the top reasons for divorce wow um Couples divorce for many other reasons as well, other than a lack of commitment or infidelity. Here are the top three. 58% of couples report arguing in excess conflict. They can't communicate. Okay. 45% of divorcing couples indicate they married too young. Okay. They got, you know, 18 years old, fell in love, got pregnant, got married. <clears throat> right. The age old tale. 38% financial problems as a divorce cause. As what? 38% of financial problems are cause for divorce. Okay. I believe that that number is probably higher. I know that this is a study that's done, but I know that when money gets fucked up, things change. Mm -hmm. So money getting fit, fucked up could lead to excessive arguing. Right. And that's what they're actually blaming the relationship failing on versus realizing that the arguing is coming from the stress of not being able to pay bills, yada, yada, yada. The final straw causing divorce is most commonly infidelity, domestic violence, or substance abuse. And their stats there, 66% of men and 74% of women think that their partner should have worked harder to save the marriage. Damn. Right. You should have done more. Not Damn. me. You should have done more. I did all I could. You should have done more. Yeah. That, that's a problem for me. 70% of couples report not understanding the realities uh, or stages of their marriage. It then goes on to say a lack of knowledge about what marriage entails. Wait, what? Hang on. Start over. 70% of people what? 70% of couples okay. report not understanding the reality or stages of a marriage. 70%? Mm -hmm. Didn't know what they were getting themselves into 70%. effectively. <clears throat> Did, do they mean... Let me, let me read the paragraph. It might answer your questions. Okay. The lack of knowledge about what marriage entails is one of the leading contributing factors to divorce. In fact, 72% of couples reported... They didn't fully understand the commitment involved in marriage before they tied the knot. Many divorced people said that they were surprised their partner changed over the marriage and were unable to cope with the new problems that arose over time personally. If you get married believing that your marriage and your relationship and your person is going to be the same way that they are forever or that you are going to be the same way that you are right now forever, you are fucking delusional. People grow. People change, they evolve, new th thought processes happen, new behavior patterns develop. Your circumstances in your life are going to change and you are going to have to adapt. Right. Or you are going to have to, you know, maybe maybe it's a, a good adaptation, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. But that's something that you have to be aware of. And if you think that you are always going to be who you are right now, you're fucking delusional. So that's a huge part of it. That speaks on ignorance. Um, and then this gets into divorce rates. We we'll skip that. It's not really relevant. Uh, divorce rates by occupation. Uh, skip that. Bartenders have a really high divorce rate. I believe that. Um, divorce rates are higher among people uh, below the poverty line. 
Divorce rate steadily decreases from 40 to 30% as income increases <clears throat> because if you've got money, you have less stress. That, you know, is a factor. Um, and then it just co keeps going. I'm not going to keep going. There's a lot to this. I, I put the link in the chat for those of you who would like to, to read that you can. Um, I added some of my own stats to this list. Um, between point. 0002 and 0.0006% of 1,000 people die from skydiving. Okay. People so not, oh, never mind, I'm not going to say that. People are terrified of skydiving. Mm -hmm. What if my chute doesn't open? I'm going to die. 2.6 per 1,000 couples end in divorce. And people will still get married without doing the research or doing the information or doing anything. Mm -hmm. Because it's socially acceptable. You're not crazy if you're getting divorced or married. You might be crazy if you're not. You guys have been together 10 years. You haven't got married right. yet. Ooh, there's commitment issues there. Maybe you can't get it up. Like, why aren't they married yet? And all of that social bullshit. Oh, you're going skydiving. You're crazy. I couldn't do that. What if you die? 0 0.0002 or 0.006% of 1,000 people die in skydiving. 2.6% of marriages per 1,000 end in divorce. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the number for a new updated, because earlier it said that around 50%, the number is now actually 56% of marriages and a divorce. Um, it is estimated that another 15 to 20% of married couples seek divorce lawyers to explore their options and decide whether or not they want to move forward. And that is never spoken about when you speak on the numbers of divorce. So if that's true, there are people out there, an additional 15 to 20% who decide that it's easier to just stay and be miserable, or maybe we really need to seek counseling. It may not be that they're miserable. They could fix their marriage. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just looking to find out what they could get if they get married. <clears throat> um, earlier, we spoke on what marriage is. Uh, we spoke to it being religious or spiritual, that it is a covenant. Um, in some cases, it's a sacrament or even a social status, mm -hmm. right? Um, socially, uh, these are just my notes, so some of this may not even make sense because okay. I speed type when I'm making notes. Socially, marriage means that we are agreeing that we are each other's person and that we are going to do this life thing forever. That's a beautiful thought, right? Like, I don't have to go it alone anymore. Mm -hmm. Marriage is essentially the sword in Zelda. It's dangerous yeah. to go it alone. Here, take this, right? Like... Sorry, I'm a nerd. It is what it is. Zelda don't, was my thing growing up. Don't you ever apologize. Um, <clears throat> so again, that's a beautiful thing. I then wrote legal court system marriages have its own defined set of parameters of what a marriage is. So when we as a society go into marriage, we are going in under a covenant with our, our religion. We are going into it to have a ceremony or a sacrament, or we are going into it for a social status. Yeah. Believing that this is going to be the person for the end of the world. Marriage defined legally in America by the court system has very different sets of rules. And this is where a prenuptial agreement would come into play. Okay. If you were going to get married, you should be seeking a lawyer and getting a prenuptial agreement because you need to figure out assets in the worst case scenario. We've talked about this in the past that it is a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that the marriage is going to end? No. But I know that 2.6 out of 1,000 do. So if that's the case, maybe we should just go ahead and start making arrangements so that in the event that we get divorced, the court and the government is not involved. Right. I then wrote, um, legal court system marriages have its own set of parameters and the purpose of the prenup is to protect everyone involved on a legal level. It allows them to make the rules that will govern the economics of their relationship Period, full stop. And then the next thing that I wanted to touch on said, when was the last time you said we should totally put that, uh, we should totally put that in the government's hands, let them be in charge of it and had total 100% faith that everything was going to work out. If any of you answered yet to, yes to that, you should just go ahead and commit yourself because the government does not have your best interest at play. Yeah. Yep. Correct. No, and... On top of that, I wrote, knowing that they can change the rules after the contract is signed, a prenuptial agreement stops that. Because um, in before, two, before 2016, um, 
alimony payments were non-taxable income. Were non-taxable income. Yep. That okay. money was passed from person to person non-taxed. So if you were married in 2000, if you were married in 1950 and got divorced in 2015, your alimony payments look very different than people who after 2016, because your grandfather <laughs> did. If you get divorced after 2016, that alimony payments are taxable income. Okay. So the government gets money on that. And that contract may have started in 1950 and divorce might have happened in 2025. That alimony is taxed. They changed the terms of your agreement in your contract of marriage with your marriage license because of politics. So your contract between the, the two of you in terms of what you agree upon as marriage and what happens at the end of marriage or end of life, the government, because they're the ones who officiated your contract, gets to have decision on the way that things happen afterwards. You're allowing too much power from the government into your personal life, and they have the ability to vote to allow your contract to be altered. And no other situations is that the case where two people can have their contract altered from a third party. Right. Fucked up when you think about it, but it's true. You can look this up. This is actual. This is factual. I feel like we just have a bunch of lone sharks in charge of us right now. Mm -hmm. Just slimy, greasy, nefarious. Willing to hurt you to make a point. They do not have our best interest at play and they have not for a very long time. Crazy. So what is a prenup? <clears throat> a, are you asking me? Mm -hmm. A prenup is a mutually agreed upon, mutually beneficial contract, contract constructed while the two are still in love. Yep. In case. The event of a divorce. A really easy way to explain that to people is yours, mine, and ours. Okay. So if we go into a marriage, what's mine is mine, what's yours is yours, and what's ours has to be sold, split 50-50, and figured out in the event of a divorce. During that time frame, if we're married, and you have your own bank account, and I have my own bank account, and we have the joint bank account. Everything that goes into my bank account is mine. Everything that goes into your bank account is yours. That will adhere at the end of the marriage. Right. The marital assets that we have created together, businesses, homes, whatever, then has to be sold, split, and moved forward on how that's going to look. That's the point of the prenup. Yours, mm -hmm. mine, and ours. Are you hungry? Uh, I am not. Is it okay if I order food? Where are you going to order from? This place called Skillets. Do they have a breakfast burrito? Or a really good breakfast sandwich? They have a border burrito. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, three eggs scrambled with chorizo, yeah. grilled onion, potatoes, That's peppers. Fine. Okay. Oh, um, you're going to love this. While you're, re while you're doing that, I'm going to read this because I wrote down the economy of love. Because I've never heard this phrase before. Okay, I can't do this while you're reading. Okay, I then can't. we will take a break. Okay. You do the food thing and I'll read the comments. Okay, thank you. Aloha said, can you make a prenup or similar document when you're already married? Yes, you can. Would you it, like a drink, babe? Uh, yes. Uh, Mad Moose said, it is sad to think that many years ago, marriage was kept a secret in villages and done in private to keep from the kings and rulers over the land from finding out. Right, because they have no fucking business being in your marriage. Yeah. And for anybody that, like, here's the perfect argument of this. When you talk about uh, gay, bisexual, lesbian couples getting married, why the fuck do you have to ask the government for permission? Right. Right. Uh, Valeris said this, the whole statement, a prenup is ensuring that both sides are protected. You are taking care of your partner. I'll never understand the people that think a prenup is controlling and disloyal. The people who believe that, are there because they want to level up or they think they're going to get fucked in their marriage and they don't have enough information. So they're stating those things from a place of ignorance. Um, Mad Moose then said newlywed women back then would be taken from villages on the first night on known marriages to basically be used by the rulers. They actually did things like that in uh, Braveheart. Oh, I remember that. Yep. Yep. Uh, Hello Baby said, marriage is necessary in today's society. Just thinking about when people get sick or have legal issues or die. We have made it necessary. A hospital doesn't care if you've been together for 20 years. Okay, so that's not true because you can have um, living wills and uh, trust set up and you can have legal documentation put in place that will give you 
uh, medical surrogacy, uh, surrogacy um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you have the ability to make medical decisions. A medical surrogate is the word I was looking for. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. If, if, um, if somebody in our lives like Sean, who doesn't really have a whole lot of family was to get sick and he knew he was getting sick, he could give me power of attorney mm-hmm. and let me have medical surrogacy so that in the event that he becomes incapacitated, I can make medical decisions on his behalf. Okay. There are contracts that allow that to happen. Abby said, Tom was genuinely shocked when I suggested a prenup first. He appreciated that I wanted to protect his assets. Kat said, power of attorney. Heather said, a prenup is a formal contract between two entities to ensure certain obligations are fulfilled on a specific day should it be executed and is beneficially agreed upon. It's simple. I agree. Jackie said, as a lesbian, the only reason why I wanted it to be legal uh, is for the legal aspect and financial benefits. Um, You could do that without having the legal marriage. This is where a living trust comes into play. And there is a difference between a will and a trust. You can get online and draft a will. And that will, when you die, is going to be ripped apart by everybody who wants what you had. If you had 100 acres of land that had a farm on it that was generating $500,000 a year in profit revenue, whatever, and there were cows and tractors and all that shit, and you had four kids, those four kids are going to war over trying to get who can get what so they can benefit the most out of that. There's going to be one who doesn't want the farm to be disposed of. There's going to be one who wants the cattle. There'll be one who wants to sell everything and split the profits. And there would be one who um, may not want anything at all. If you have a living trust that sets up where things go, there is no arguing. There's no court that can happen afterward. That trust is fucking binding as your last wishes, period. All right, food is ordered. Okay. So I heard the phrase, the economy of love. Um, something I had never heard of. And the, def- the, the surface level definition says it is the balance between the four definitions I'm sorry, four dimensions of society, economy, culture, and environment. Okay. Those four things are always going to have some sort of play in our existence. So it's foolish to not think that it would have play in your marriage, Mm -hmm. right? (coughs) Um, I then found a blurb that I'm just going to read. It's not very long. The currency of love is action. In furtherance of the survival and improved welfare of the one loved. Um, This comes from Dr. Ashley Montague, a renowned anthropologist who studied human love and explained it this way. Here is a portal, some of Dr. Montague's life works. There's a link here. It says, he says all of this better than I can and read the protege's work. It's another link from Roderick Gorney. Um, And it's called the human agenda for those of you who want to look that up. It says the currency is used whenever we receive our partners, every action prompted by love. Okay. Every action prompted by love. Right. And then it gives examples. Okay. Does he or she take your clothes to the cleaners? Okay. That's love. Does she, he or she make uh, home cooked meals? Do they serve your food? That is what love's currency is. And then it put in parentheses time and action there is a currency there time and action you have to give serve in order to be fulfilled and have a full love bank account right right um this is uh time and action it's being spent to save you time which is done as an act of love repeat that one more time Uh, it's being spent to save you time which is an act of love okay so time and action does he or she Take the night feeding so the other can sleep more. That's love. Does he or she pay the mortgage or rent? That's love. Keep food on the table. Prepare the children for their futures. Read to the children every day. All of this is love's currencies. Actions in furtherance of the survival of the ones loved or actions taken for their benefit. Acts of service. We're doing this shit together. We're a fucking team. We're taking care of each other. Right. We earn this currency by being true to ourselves and simultaneously generous of spirit and ready to act on behalf of the ones we love, i.e. we have to serve the marriage, which is what I said in the beginning, which is why I even fucking posted this thing. Right. Um, 
The beauty of love is that we are loved for ourselves, for being alive and demonstrating that our identities through our actions and in moments of time, one to one, the one to one ratio that we share with our loved one by continuing to love the other and continuing to improve the actions, um, ensuring to the benefit of those love that we cherish that we show our love. Someone rich with love will organize their lives as part of a couple in a manner which is consistent with the loved one and their own joint priorities in life. We're working as a team. We're putting the marriage first. We're serving each other. Yeah, I could keep reading this, mm-hmm. but it, it goes on and on. That's that's just about it. Like that speaks to everything. It does, yeah. It really it really baffles me how many people expect their person to change and cater to their needs, but is not willing to serve their person, or they they overlook the time and action put in by their person. The email that we read yesterday about the woman who did not get the deep conversations from her partner the way that she wanted conversations to go for example right that man did everything else that women would fucking kill to have he was present with the children he was a hard worker that he took her on dates every week he was intimate intimate a good lover like he checked every box but she still found something to complain about and that the conversations they have are not deep enough for her with no example of what a deep conversation looked like right So she negated all of that time and action and effort of her husband to find the one thing that she doesn't like instead of accepting that that's his one character flaw or that's the one area of life that they're just never going to mesh in and working to correct that. She wants to know how to make him be a more of a communicative person. Well, maybe find uh, interest in his hobbies so that he has something new to discuss with you. If you've been married for 15 years or 20 years, you've talked about everything there is to talk about. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about superficial things, the news, politics, television. You're talking about whatever is currently relevant in your life because you've lived the last 20 years together. So unless you're reminiscing about the things that happened, that person knows everything about your life. You've lived it so long together, you are enmeshed. What more do you need? Or how do they provide deeper conversations at that point? Do you want to have philosophical discussions? Do you want to sit down and plan debates? Read books together. Right. There has to be something that brings it past television shows, politics, religion, right. the socioeconomic bullshit. Right? There, I, I don't know what your question is. I was just basically saying that there's got to be something more oh, okay. than, than the basic fucking conversations. There's always that, more than that. Yeah. That people go through. Um, The last thing that I've got on this list is talking about the women who, men and women, who will say when I met them, they had nothing. And while we've been married, they've built an empire. And because I supported them while building that empire, I deserve half. So. Okay, hang on. I want to make sure I'm following right. So they didn't put in any work, but they were a supportive system. Right. Right. While the empire was built, now they feel like they deserve half. Right. While they were married, she took care of the kids. Maybe she was a stay-at-home. He built a business. She deserves half of that business. Because he had nothing when they met. And she stood by him or her. They stood by each other and did the married thing when everything was good and gave him the faith that he needed in himself to build a business. We'll just say he because this is more common with men than it is with women. Right. This is where that prenup would come into mind for me. Okay. Because you made that choice to put your own dreams, your aspirations on the back burner to be a pillar of support for him. Marriage didn't work out. Now, if there is a, I'll support you for a year and a half to two years until you're able to get back on your feet, I could understand that. But that's his business. If you weren't in there grinding, staying up until two o'clock in the morning, dealing with the clients, not taking a paycheck for the first six months... There's a lot to that. Yeah, there And that is. speaks to yours, mine, and ours. Right. So if we build the business and it's in our name, it's our business. Right. If you're working a normal job, say that you're not a stay-at-home and you're working doing secretary work or whatever it is that you're a tattoo artist, mm-hmm. and I decide I want to open a construction company and I'm a welder by trade and I'm going to do metal fabrication. How about that? Right. And I open a business and I'm working 80 to 90 hours a week and you're, you're doing the, the work thing also, but... We're not together and you're supporting me saying like, you got this babe and maybe you even support me financially for the first year while I'm building my brand. Mm -hmm. That business in my name would still be my business because I'm the one who did the work. And even though you supported me in that, what about all the things that I supported you in during that time? 
Right. At what point does that level of I supported you actually matter? And the definition, the example that I heard of this is that your parents raised you into the person that you are that allowed you to be that supportive person. So do I, as the man who has a business now, owe your parents alimony as well because they supported you while you were being raised that made you the person who you are, just like you supported me while we were married right. to make me the man that I am. Do I not owe your grandparents? Like how does, and how does that split happen? Because they supported you the way that you supported me. At some point, that level of support has to be percentage. Yeah. That That's a very hard thing because people feel like, if we're, it, well, they feel more than that. If we're going to be married for the rest of our lives and we're doing this thing and we've created a business and we're making a million dollars a year now or 10 million a year or even a hundred thousand. And when we married, we were making 20,000 a year and we were broke as fuck and we've become accustomed to this level of life. Right. I supported you in your dreams and stood by you while you were broke. Now you've got a little bit of money and you want to balance. So I want mine. Like there's a, there's a questionable area in that. Like, where does that land? And that's, again, where prenups come in. Yeah, I agree with prenups. I, I'm willing to go as far as to say that even if I opened a business and you helped me run the business. Right. But you did it from a standpoint of a part-time job. Even if you didn't work for money in the beginning, but you ended up getting benefits from the business later in terms of vacations and a better bank account. Are you getting your worth back while we're living together from that? Getting the worth back from what? From doing the, the work part-time in the beginning. Do you want me to do the question again? Because yeah. I saw you looking at your phone. If you, if, 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 okay, let's say I decided I wanted to be a metal fabricator and I opened a metal fabricating business and no, I put, I heard all of that. I, I'm, I'm repeating the entire problem, giving you an example so okay. you can answer my question. If I did that and I, I'm deciding that I'm going to work 78 to 80 hours a week and I finally build a brand and I'm making money and now I need a receptionist or somebody to help me with paperwork or social media marketing. Mm -hmm. And for three hours, twice a week, you sit down and do paperwork or social media marketing. And obviously there's no pay there because we're married and we're helping support each other. And then eventually you start working for the business part-time doing other things and you don't get paid an actual paycheck because the business is ours or, or mine and the money's going into our joint account or whatever. <coughs> but we're, you not, were, we're not married? We are. But we are getting a enhancement to our quality of life. We're getting a boost because of the money that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are by proxy benefiting from those couple of hours a week that you're putting into the business, even though it's still my business. You helped me in that aspect. You did the paperwork. You helped find clients. You helped the marketing. You are helping me. Right. But I could hire an employee to do that. And it would probably be cheaper than the vacations that we're taking or the things that we do. Yeah, I was thinking that's a choice in that moment to save money. Right. If I didn't want to do that job, I wouldn't be doing the job. Hire somebody if we're making a revenue. Would you feel that you're entitled to part of the business because during that growth phase, you helped? No, because I made a choice to help. There are a lot of people out there who believe that because they did those things, they worked part time or they right. they helped paint when the building was being done or whatever the case may be, that they were part of the process of opening a business and they're owed that money. They helped paint. <coughs> it's just an example. Right. No, but if that's the thought process, then the carpenter who bit out the wall in the tattoo studio when you sell the business gets a percentage. Right. Well, they got paid to do the job, whereas the person there that's grinding with you didn't because you're working for free trying but, to build a life. But they did because you got to benefit from the fruit of that labor. I agree with that because that's my perception of it as well. Right. We talked about this with your bath line. If, right. if your bath line became fucking massive and you became the next like Jeffrey star, but of female descent and not <laughs> anyways, that I was about to really go off on a tangent there. I was okay. stopping myself. I was going to make alien jokes and shit, but if you became that big with your product line and you were doing bath and body scents and soaps and all of that shit, and I helped you bottle and package and do all of that in the beginning. And we're laughing and listening to Bob Marley and fucking cracking jokes and being intimate together while we're working. And that goes on for 10 or 15 years. And you've turned this into a $15 million business. I don't, I don't get nothing from that. That's yours. Right. 
Me choosing to do that meant that I got to spend a couple extra hours with you while you were doing what you had to do for work instead of sitting at home playing video games. Right. I don't feel like I would be entitled to that shit. Would I like some of the money? Absolutely. But am I entitled to it? No, I'm not. Right. That's your that's your brand. Like if I if I wanted to be a part of it, I should have put my name on the paperwork along with yours and it could have been our brand. And then at that case, I should have been working on it just as much as you were to make it ours, not mine or yours. Right. I agree. There is something that I have highlighted to go over today in the women's call. Okay. And a little snippet <coughs> from Never Split the Difference. Chris Voss would do like seminars with students. And he gave, so he paired them off in couples. He gave one prosperer $10 and then an acceptor would be the one who'd be like, I want half. Well, you can have $2. And he did this exercise to show how what fair is and how we as humans make emotion-based decisions. Even though we may have logic in our thought process, every decision is based on emotion. An example that I thought of was giving a homeless person food, right? The logic thought process is they have no money, they're hungry. The emotion behind that is I would want somebody to help me in that situation, right? Or this is my good deed of the day. If somebody didn't give a fuck about that homeless person, they're not buying that homeless person food. Right. So it's an emotion-based decision. Once he did the whole little class thing, he came back for with the students to where it was $8 and $2, $5, $5, 7 and 3 there was not a single one where it was nine or one. And he was like, any of you who did more than one, like you gave away more than one dollar, you made an emotional based decision. They were like, what are you talking about? You're wrong. And he was like, you found, right, found the $10. The person who you just happened to say, oh, I found $10 was going from zero to one dollar. In reality, they didn't even deserve the dollar. Anything more than the one was fair. Right. So if we are looking at somebody who did free work in the beginning to help get something established, I view that as, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how to say this out loud. My brain is making sense, but putting it in reality is not. Um, I, I get what you're saying. Okay. And I have another thought. I have a lot of thought processes on this. Um if we're if we're if we're broke, right? Let's yeah. say that we met each other and I was a welder by trade and I made just enough money to exist. Mm-hmm. I'm eating ramen, my car's old beat up, it's constantly in, in repair, and all of my money's going to repair the car. I have my own tools, and we decide we're gonna open a business, and you decide that you're gonna help me open the business, and knowing that I need somebody to do something in the business and that it will eventually create a good life for us. You don't work for five years doing anything other than helping me in this business. And we build this business up into something amazing. Mm -hmm. And during that first five years, we were struggling. But the bills were paid. Your car payments were made. The house payment was made. We were eating. We weren't taking vacations, but we made enough to to get by. Right. We are working for less than a minimum wage, just enough to get by in hopes that we're going to build this dream together. I'm not working to do this. No, we're, we are. We're working. We're both working the same business. We're, we're trying to build one of our dreams. So this is our dream. Let's say it's your soap line. Let's say okay. it was your soap line. You decided you were going to do the soap thing. And right. I was like, all right, well, I can continue tattooing or I can come help you. And knowing that your, your thing is going to make more money long term than me tattooing. And I can always go back to tattooing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come and quit my fucking job. And I'm going to spend all my free time helping you do the thing to make your brand. I'm going to help you with marketing. I'm going to do all this shit because right. we're married. Yeah. We're trying to build ourselves for longevity. 20 years goes by. The first five years of your brand, I'm putting in a shit ton of effort, but we're surviving. Yeah. We're eating. We're having good marriage. Like life is good. I go back to tattooing. You're thriving financially and we're in a whole new tax bracket because of it. Okay. I'm not entitled to your business. I'm not entitled to any of the money. All of that that happened in the beginning, we were making our ends meet. Me quitting my job to do that, to help you build your brand didn't make us homeless. Right. I was still technically being paid through your business because you were paying all the bills. Right. I didn't have to worry about my car payment, my cell phone, none of that shit, because your money coming in from the work that we were doing together was paying it. Mm -hmm. There's no scorekeeping there. This is what we have to do right now to survive. 
It's no different than if we both go get minimum wage jobs and our, our poor is a motherfucker working just to get by right now. The only difference is, is that there's a potential upcome, uh, come up later in life if your brand takes off, right? Mm-hmm. In that situation, I'm not entitled to your brand. I'm not entitled to your money. I'm not entitled to any of it because we are surviving. Yeah, We are doing what we need to do in the moment to live. And if we're great and everything is happy and loving, why would I feel the need to do that? Now, if we break up and you're a millionaire and I'm not, and I'm going back to tattooing, the need to be vindictive and want my piece of that is it's vindictive behavior. It's it's entitlement, right? It's you're going to be doing really good and I'm really not. I want mine. Right. That that's what that is to me. I don't. So for people who are hiring their friends, if you started that business and you hired a friend part time to come and help you make soap and do the thing and they work for you for five years and you let them go or they quit or move on or whatever the case may be, or you sell your business. They're not entitled to any of the money of you selling your business because they work there for less than minimum wage or minimum wage or they helped or whatever the case may be. It's fucking yours. Mm -hmm. They made the decision to sell their time at that cost to do the thing. It's an act of choice. So at what point in a marriage in this scenario, is it acceptable for somebody to go, well, I'm owed X, Y, Z because I helped you do that. If your name is not on the business, you're not entitled to fucking anything because it's not your business. Right. You made a decision to help somebody that you love and you should accept the fact that you did a nice thing even though you got burned in the long run Mm -hmm. because you were in love, right? So now you're scorekeeping. Right. If you're having this in the back of your mind, if that was the scenario and you start making a million dollars a year or $10 million a year on your bath line and I'm fucking spinning your money in our head, in my head, like, yeah, we're going to get a boat. We're going to fucking buy this and we're going to do that. We're going to travel and it's all your dime. It's your business. I just get to benefit from it. And I'm, and then I start thinking, well, if we get divorced, she makes 800 times what I do. I'm getting fucking paid. I'm getting alimony. Now yeah. things start to change in my head. This divorce is looking really good because now I'm be free and I'm never going to have to fucking work again. Right. Yeah. So where does that plan? This is the discussion of prenuptial agreements. Right. And this also speaks on scorekeeping. It speaks on who you are as a person and what your entitlement is. I don't think that anybody is entitled to anything. Mm-hmm. I think that you have to make that shit work. And if you want to make that business work, then you should be like, look, I'm willing to quit my job and help you, but I want to be 50% owner of this if I'm going to do that. Right. right? Like, so, so where does that go? Where does what go? All of it. Like, where do you stand in that? Do you agree with all of that? With what you said or? <clears throat> with all of it. How would that make you, uh, better yet, how would that well, make you feel if, okay, answer that first because I'm a tangent again. Okay, well, I agree with what you said, but I also had a thought of we have a podcast that we've made built on our growth as human beings. If one of my exes came to me and said, I'm the one who traumatized you, I get a slice of that. Fuck you do. The fuck out of here. Right. Right. I'm responsible for your growth. That's what that says. Yes. Therefore, I I feel entitled to some of the payment. Mm-hmm. You did nothing for this other than traumatize me. You get nothing. You're lucky I don't break your face. Right. right? Like there's... Okay, so that's a really good explanation and a good way to look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, how would that make you feel thinking that while we were madly in love with each other and you were chasing your dream that I was willing to quit and suffer with you to do that and then I came back later and was like, look, I'm entitled to some of this because I suffered with you. Because of the... Um, Im- okay, let's answer that first. Okay, so it depends on how things played out. If things were amicable and you didn't hit me with, I deserve some of that. If I am a multimillionaire, I'm okay with giving you 25 cents per sale. Yeah. Indefinitely? Right? Um, it depends. on. It depends. Okay. It depends. But I, I would recognize that those five years were a sacrifice for you and I would not be where I'm at because, without you. So the good person in me would want to recognize, appreciate that and... I would give you some sort of benefit for whatever, whatever, whatever. If you turned into a greedy person and no longer made me priority and were really shitty to me and then demanded a slice of things, you can get fucked. That was a choice that you made to help me because you loved me. Right. Yeah. I'm going to go back full circle now. Okay. The people who are like, I'm willing to live in a cardboard box with you for the rest of your life and I'm Mm -hmm. willing to suffer and not have a dope existence. 
I believe there's more love in that than the people who are building a brand and then go after the person saying that they deserve something because they suffered together for five years. Yep. If we suffered for 20 years and then made a little something for ourselves, that 20 years of suffrage is going to mean a whole lot more than that little bit of time that we made for ourselves. Yeah. Because you stuck through me or stuck with me through all of the hardships and, and the, the mental health and, and the brokenness and like, there's a lot to that. Yeah, the emotions and the fucking mental breakdowns. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot to process and a lot to think about. And I think that a lot of this comes down to people's natural vindictive nature mm -hmm. and wanting people to hurt the way that they do. Right. And feeling like I deserve quality of life because of X, Y, Z. Well, you don't deserve anything. Right. If you really wanted to keep that quality of life, you would have prioritized the marriage and made things work versus stepping away and hoping that somebody's going to finance you for the rest of your life. It's a lot to think about. It is. This was not where I had planned on all of this going, but I had this thought as we were getting ready to ride here and I typed it out and we just ran with it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Our food's on the way. Okay. Kat said, together equals yours is mine and mine is yours. All is ours. We are one entity. A part equals mine is mine. Yours is yours. We are single entities. I think that that's when it comes down to yours, ours, or yours, mine, and ours. Mm -hmm. If... If I, if I was like, I believe this much in your dream that I'm willing to invest all of my time and effort into it, I want to be a part of it. And we put the licenses in our name, then we would have to sell the business or I would have to get a percentage of the profits every single year in terms of a dis distribution of profits. Right? right. And that would be a discussion that could be had during the phase of building or once the, the thing starts taking off, maybe we need to go see a lawyer and be like, Hey, this needs to go from a, a sole proprietorship to a a S corp where we can do assign shares and, and things like that. Right. Like that would be a logical discussion to be had. And that should be had while you're in love and not while you're angry, hurt and trying to get a level up. Right. And that speaks on a prenuptial agreement as well. That also speaks on the need of a trust, uh, the, the issues of articles of incorporation and the way that you're going to make that work and why people actually need to get lawyers when there's starting to be money involved because people get real fucking weird when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. um, I'm through my notes. Okay. So I don't have anything else to discuss. I know that you've got a live call in 45 minutes or 50, 55 minutes. No. Is that one, right? Two. Okay. So then where else should we take this conversation? Because we're an hour and 28 minutes in. Um, I don't know because this isn't really what we talked about yesterday in the car. I, I had different recollections of discussions. Right. Well, this, all of this came about because of this morning. Okay. Um, I, the divorce statistics led into a whole lot of other conversations because mm -hmm. I was on that. What's the point in it? Right. What do you get out of it? And like, I was trying to get answers for that. And what do you bring to the table? Because most mm -hmm. people will say, I bring me to the table. Well, you to right. the table is not enough. And getting married simply for a, an economic boost or a social status is not the reason to get married. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can just transition back to that because that was originally what we were supposed to be doing with all of this. And I fucking went hard on, on yeah. the statistics. We're an hour and a half in already, though. It's okay. We can wrap it up if you want, but we don't have nothing to do until our food gets here. So Yeah. I, well, the discuss, what I remember us discussing yesterday was making a list of what the man and the woman brings to the table individually. Okay. And what they would seek from the other partner. And I don't feel like that would be a 10 minute discussion. No, but we also didn't write it down. So let's fly by the seat of our pants and see what we can answer. That gives me too much anxiety. Because <laughs> I'm not prepared either. Okay. I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, so then I guess basic, basically back to the original <clears throat> part of all of this is what do, what, what, what do you get out of being married and what do you bring to the table? Right. For me, because of logic, brain thinking, what I get out of this is that I, I truly believe that I get to expand, I'm sorry, I get to spend the rest of my existence on this planet with somebody that is my best friend. I'm not getting anything other than spiritual connection because we made a covenant mm -hmm. between us and we have our faith involved in our marriage and we are going to renew our vows and do all of that. But beyond that, there is no point in marriage. And from my standpoint, I don't see that I'm going to get anything from being married to you that I wouldn't get otherwise because we can just agree to be together and fucking do this life thing. Right. So from my standpoint, there is a, a spiritual covenant that's being made where we are going to fucking do this and then we get to spend eternity together. Mm -hmm. 
right? That's how, that's, mm. that's a logic brain thought process of all of this. And on the emotional side of it, I fucking love you. And we have a dope ass life. And if our life, this little bit of existence on earth is going to transform into what we get in an eternity, I get to spend the eternity with my best friend and we right. get to be goofy and fucking do all of that shit in the afterlife. Oh gosh. Uninhibited by mental illness. Right. <laughs> right. Or body aches. Right. Right. <clears throat> what I bring to the marriage is nothing more than my word. That's it. Because I, I'm not bringing being a protector and a provider. I am those things. Being married to you does not make me a protector or a provider. I would do that for you even if you were like, I never wanted to, I don't want to ever marry you. Right. I just want to live here and do <clears> the thing with you. I want you to help me with my kids, whatever. Oh, we should get into the kid conversation too. But um, the only thing that I'm bringing to the marriage is my <laughs> last name and my word. I'm giving you my word that I'm going to be here for you forever. And you are going to trust that my word is honorable. Like other than that, I'm not bringing anything. Being married doesn't change who I am as a man. It doesn't change um, what I'm willing to provide. I don't believe that you become a wife. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that you become a husband. I believe you either are those things or you're not. You, right. you know what I mean? Like you can become a father. That's a role that you can learn to become. Mm -hmm. You can, I guess, learn to become what your person needs as a husband or a wife, like because that is a learned trait that comes through communication, but you are either a leader or you're not. You are either somebody who has acts of service as a love language or you are not. And if that's something that your person needs, acts of service, protector, provider, whatever, then you mesh. But if you have somebody who's truly independent that doesn't want you to, to do acts of service mm -hmm. and your love languages don't mesh, how does that work in terms of a marriage? Because at that point, you're only bringing your word. I'm going to be here ride or die until the end. Like, what do you think of that? Like, am I, am I wrong in my, my thought processes in any of this? Does any of this bother you? Like, talk to me, woman. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what you're asking me. I don't either. I guess I'm just spouting shit. Okay. It's all, it's just thoughts, word vomit. I mean, we're. So in regards to five love languages being compatible, I, I do have a firm belief that if the two main ones can't be met they don't have to align but if they can't be met by the other person you're not you're not meant to be with that person i don't foresee a long-term healthy relationship coming from that because they'll be bent up built up resentment from needs not being met i agree with that or the willingness to not understand the need that needs to be met uh, last night we talked about the protect, provide acts of service a little bit. I, mm -hmm. I think that because you do need that from a husband and that is who I am as a man, you get that by proxy by me being your husband. And that, that checks a box. It's the guaranteed. It's the word of it. Yeah. Yeah. I Well, because then I've showed you that that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I want a traditional woman. And we, do, we are going to absolutely have to make that traditional woman video where we pull that clip up because I, I want to rip that apart. Okay. But, um. For us to have that conversation of what I need from a traditional woman, I want somebody that's going to to adhere to gender roles. And I want somebody who's going to, to soften who I am because I, I have enough ugly in me. I don't need any more. I don't need a war zone. I need peace. And that peace looks like honest conversation when there's an emotional breakdown. That peace looks like knowing that in the event that you and I are going to have to have a hard discussion, that it's from a place of love and not fuck you because I'm unhappy, right? Right. Um, hmm. but that speaks more on combat compatibility. And if that's compatibility, then, then we need to be doing more about trying to figure out what we need from a spouse mm -hmm. before marriage becomes a thing. And that comes from self audits and understanding what we truly want. Then if you're a man like I am who needs a traditional woman, and that's a, a caveat of like, a um, that's a hard no, if they're not traditional, you're not going to be with them, then that you need to understand that. And you need to not be dating people who don't fall into those roles. And if you have the conversations on your third or fourth date, like where do you stand on traditional values in the event that I get married, are you willing to be in a feminine gender role? And they say no, then you probably should just end that because if that's your hard non-negotiable, right. marrying somebody who doesn't fall into that, like you said, is going to create a whole lot of problems in the marriage. <clears throat> 
It's a lot. It is a lot to think about. It's a lot to process and digest. So in this hour and a half of all this conversation, I wonder how many people have actually had discussions about this and talked about what it looks like to be married to this level. Yeah. Because if you just are going to get married because you're in love, having an emotional brain conversation versus a logic one, you're not going to have a prenup. You're not going to have the hard discussions. You're not going to have the list of expectations of what you expect out of a partner and whose jobs are what and who's going to handle what situations in the event of whatever. And that doesn't mean divorce. I mean, like, what if the kids go to college? Who's going to go scope out colleges? Right. In the event that I get sick, who's going to call doctors? You know what I mean? Like, there's a whole lot of things that need to be fished out. And it doesn't have to be. Your world's not going to end if you don't figure out who's making doctor phone calls on your fourth fucking date. But if you're now getting to the point of getting married, you need to understand your person's strengths and weaknesses and who's going to be doing what to make sure that the marriage is served and that you're serving each other so that the marriage is a priority and that it's actually going to be sustainable. Um, I think that, that that wraps up what we wanted to discuss. There's still a lot that maybe we'll do a part two on this because we didn't even remotely touch on the things that we said we were going to touch on. Right. And I absolutely want to talk about the children aspect of people who are courting and people who get into relationships with people who have kids. <laughs> And maybe that that needs to be a standalone. Okay. I would like to interact interact with. Yes, I did just say what's up, fucker, to the delivery guy. It was one of my friends, Jacob. He was he was the one who was arguing for giants. Yeah. Inside of the Earth on the conspiracy episode, he was our DoorDash guy. Yeah. Um, Jacob is one of those people that is a true human being, and if you call him, he will be there. Mm -hmm. He's very very rare. He's a very very rare soul, and I appreciate him very much. Um, so anyways, now that we are done with the conversation, because we're an hour and forty minutes in, I would like to interact with the chat a little bit. Does anybody have anything of, of relevance that they would like to add to the conversation that I can throw into the end of the episode for the podcast? Because this will be a Friday episode that drops. I'm going to give it a second and see if anybody says anything. How's it looking? Is that my burrito? No, that's my food. Um, I didn't want it to sit in there and perspirate on itself. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, but I got sausage gravy and biscuits and it's hunks of meat instead of sausage. And I'm trying not to set the house on fire. You mean like they're not sausage links or patties? No, it's like chunk. You know how they do like chunked chicken inside of those 99 cent yeah. chicken pot pies? That's what it looks like. That's disgusting. Yeah. All right, guys. So our food is here. We're going to wrap up the podcast. I would like to say that if you have any concerns or issues about communication and what it should look like moving into your marriage, we have created multiple lists. We have mm -hmm. a questionnaire that you can download for the courting phase and we have the check-ins, which we believe to be the ultimate form of improving your communication needs. It allows you to learn how to communicate with your person, how they effectively communicate back. And it gives you a stress-free environment where you can do report cards and ask for truth mm -hmm. about your performance as a partner and how you can improve. Yep. So go to our website, tobebetter.co, click on downloads, and then download your PDF or watch the video that explains it. There's questions that are predetermined on how to, to navigate that, and it'll greatly benefit you. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you want to add, Miss Hotness Everdeen? I do not. All right, so we're going to wrap this up then. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys on Patreon who are watching live while we record this. And uh, remember that you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.